Today, on December 15, 2009, a California judge issued a permanent injunction which prohibits Psystar from selling their commercial Hackintoshes, aka open computers, which illegally are sold with Apple's Mac OS X software. Surely today is a great lesson in copyright law, and we won't have to deal with this issue ever again. It happened again. Does nobody frickin' learn from history? Really? We're doing this again? Okay, let's just get it over with. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because I get high off of other people's stupidity. That's why I made that Lit Mobile episode. And don't worry, I still have some follow-up episodes planned for that, so stay tuned. But today, we're gonna be talking about another company that just does not seem to get it. Open Core Computer launched a commercial Hackintosh. What's a Hackintosh? Quick lesson. A Hackintosh is a portmanteau of Hack and Macintosh. Apple's Mac OS system software is made to only run on Macs, but the Hackintosh community created ways to run that software on non-Apple hardware. If you're not selling the systems, generally you won't have any legal issues with this, but commercial Hackintoshes is where we hit the big problems. That's what Psystar sold. They're defunct now. Anyway, back to Open Core Computer. You can go to their website, opencore.computer, to build your configuration. But wait, hang on. Did they just steal the name and logo from the Open Core bootloader developers? Shameless. Well, anyway, let's look at their website. They have a single page which tries to sell the idea behind the computer. At the bottom, you can configure a system with macOS Catalina installed using the Open Core bootloader. Huh, they misspelled illegally. Weird. There's three models, but only the Velociraptor is available on this day. If you ask me, the company's gonna get shut down before the Megalodon even releases. Place your bets now. If you max everything out, it'll cost you $4,819 if you pay the full amount. By the way, their config wizard is tedious as Now here's where I see the first red flag. Well, I saw a bunch already, but this is a real red flag. Because of the convoluted macOS end user license agreement, agreement, our payment provider options are limited. Thus, we've chosen to only accept Bitcoin payments currently. They even go on to imply this isn't a scam. Personally, I don't think this is a scam. Well, at least yet. That's not the main thing I'm concerned about. The main thing I'm concerned about is that they're violating copyright law and stealing other companies' intellectual property. Pro tip, don't do that. Now, I'm no legal expert, but the macOS EULA stipulates you cannot redistribute, sell, or sublicense this software. And it seems like OpenCore Computer is trying to get around that by only accepting Bitcoin payments. I'm not exactly sure how that loophole works, so we'll see how long that actually lasts. Also, taking a look at the hero images on the website, the computer case looks photoshopped. Knowing this company, it was probably with a pirated version of Photoshop. Anyway, the logo brightness and aspect ratio doesn't match up between these two images. And in case you're wondering, the computer case they're using is a Lian Li Lee TU-150. Now here's a question I have received a million times. Crazy Ken, why doesn't Apple just allow other people and companies to install macOS on non-Apple hardware? It's a legit question, I get it, and we can go down a huge rabbit hole of reasons. But the best answer I can give is this. They already tried that, and it sucked, financially. There was a time where Apple allowed other vendors to sell their own computers, non-Apple computers, with Mac ROMs and Mac OS software, just like the Super Mac right here. And these computers were collectively known as Mac clones. With the success of Windows, Microsoft was gaining tons of users. This clearly demonstrated how successful their cross-platform strategy was. Because of the competitive pressures, Apple is doing more than just upgrading its Macintosh operating system. It has begun to license the Mac OS and authorize the manufacture and sale of Macintosh clones. The first official Mac clone launched on March 27, 1995. It was a Radius System 100, and it featured a PowerPC 601 with a clock speed of up to 110 megahertz and 264 megabytes of RAM. Over time, Apple actually lost money doing this, and they weren't gaining any more market share, so it totally wasn't worth it. Apple received $50 for each Mac clone sold. There might have been some other fluctuations in that price depending on different agreements, but it was pretty much 50 bucks per computer, and that was not enough to keep this plan going. So some changes needed to be made. When Steve Jobs came back to Apple in 1997, he made a lot of changes with the company, and one of them had to do with the Mac clones. 
And I went to the clone vendors and I said, guys, we're going to go broke doing this. And if we go down the the whole ecosystem will go down the and you won't be here either. So we've got to fix this. We'd like to sell you our software, but you've got to pay a fair price for it. Not an exorbitant price, just a fair percentage of the costs. And we outlined what that was, and we asked them to do that. I personally asked them to do this. And they basically told me to go pound sand. Being a man of perseverance, I asked five times over the next three weeks. Each time we were told to go pound sand, we finally made the decisions we have to make. Ultimately, Steve Jobs killed the clone program. With the release of Mac OS 8, no existing clone vendors could sell computers with the newer operating system because they were only licensed to sell computers with System 7. Umax, however, obtained a license to ship Mac OS 8, so they could still do this whole thing, but that license expired in 1998. After that, the Mac clone program shriveled and died. Shout out to my buddy Steve from Mac84 for helping me research the Macintosh clones. He's actually working on a much more in-depth video which covers the clone history, plus he covers many other topics on his channel, so go check him out. And there were other Mac clones before the official Macintosh clone program. I actually showed one of these and many other rare Apple prototypes in this video, which you can watch with the Computer Clan YouTube channel membership, so go check that out too. So Apple already did try this, and we know history repeats itself if you don't learn from it, and they don't want to go down that road again. That's why they had to stop Psystar, and that's why they're going to stop Open Computer as well. My bet is this is not going to last more than a few months. And I'm totally cool with the Hackintosh community. Heck, I can't wait to try some Hackintosh stuff out myself. I think that'll be fun. And if you do that stuff, great. Just don't sell those things. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this whole mess, and if you want to get some other goodies from myself and from the Computer Clan, feel free to hit the join button down below or use the link in the description so you can get access to all that cool stuff. And in doing so, you will also be supporting the channel. So thank you very much. Also, if you liked the video, you know what to do. Thanks for sticking with me, catch the crazy, and pass it on.